the amount of data, the data reliance that we see in affiliate marketing, that's going to become even more important. That's going to allow for greater personalization and targeting and understanding of both consumers that uh, are, are working their way through the affiliate networks, as well as just conversion. Um, what that means, how that's predicted, and how that's how that's estimated. So that that for me is going to take, I, I think, an area of measurement around affiliate marketing that has always been somewhat nebulous, right? And bring a lot more clarity. I'm John Wright, and you're listening to Affiliate BI, the business intelligence and affiliate marketing podcast brought to you by Statstrom. Welcome to the Affiliate BI podcast. I've got our very first guest here, and it's someone that I know, I like to think I know very well. I took his course in data visualization last summer. So I, Kevin, I'm going to let you do a quick introduction to yourself. Sure. Thanks, John. Um, I'm Kevin Hartman. Uh, I am, let's see, the last 11 years at Google. Most recently, I was Google's chief analytics evangelist. Uh, I have now made a move into academia, and I am uh, a uh, associate professor of marketing at the University of Notre Dame's Mendoza, Mendoza College of Business. Uh, so um, late career change uh, for me, but something that I've always wanted to do. Also, as John, you mentioned, I teach uh, uh, on some online platforms and uh, just get to do a lot of those things that I really love all around data storytelling and data analysis. And so how did you end up in the space of data visualization? Because it's, uh, I think in the world of business intelligence, it's almost like, uh, I wouldn't call it an afterthought, but it's kind of on mm -hmm. the side. It's uh, very important. And obviously I have a better understanding by accidentally stumbling upon your course, uh, just scrolling through data viz on Instagram, kept seeing this mm -hmm. elevator course. I'm like, Kevin, Google, I'm like, this sounds like it could be pretty good. So where did, how did, the, did you get, end up in this journey? I, let me say first that you uh, you would not be wrong by calling it an afterthought. I think it's one of those things that is just so critically important, and it's often uh, or nearly always uh, taken for granted or underestimated, and certainly not taught well. Uh, so it, it, it's we are out there doing doing the good work of trying to evangelize good data visualization, and it's it's something that you know for me. It was sort of a uh, a little bit of a little bit of talent, uh, a whole bunch of opportunity, and just a lot of luck kind of put me where I am now. I, I uh, math was something that always came easy to me, but I I never wanted to be that math guy. I wanted to be an artist, but I just didn't have the the ability, right? That is necessary there. And so once I started my business career. And I found this idea of analyzing data, leveraging those math skills and, and statistics skills that I had with the ability then to pull out stories and tell those stories, particularly visually. Wow. It was just exactly what I wanted to do. And it, it, it just so happened that, you know, I'm of an age that I was doing these things right around the time that data and digital analytics was really starting to grow. And so um, I, I just serendipitously got an offer to do some teaching. And the next thing I know, it's, it's turning into almost a second career uh, of me teaching at a number of places, data analytics, data visualization. So it was a uh, kind of right time, right, right place. Um, but, but one that I'm, I'm just so fortunate to have been uh, a part of because it's, it's something that I really do love. Yeah, I remember uh, in your course uh, showing us uh, some of the dashboards you made a long time ago. And as much as we can kind of look at them and almost laugh at them, I just look yeah. at that and go, I mean, imagine doing that for a solid 10 years. I think uh, yeah. that skill set would be very valuable today. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Right. I mean, we, we, I have learned personally just so much. And I think I've, I've hopefully um, uh, taught so many people on the right ways to visualize data and particularly build dashboards. Dashboards are one of those things that um, if you can understand all the concepts of telling a static story based in a presentation, those same ideas should translate over to a dashboard and they almost never do. Right. So that's been, it's been a real focus of mine. Uh, and it's, it's hard for me too, to look back at those dashboards 
that we created so long ago. But they 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 provide perfect opportunities for us to pick them apart and really understand what uh, what good really should be. Yeah, they're excellent case studies and. Obviously, I mean, I think it would be very difficult for you to not look everywhere that you like in everyday life and not see dashboards and data viz everywhere. So what what are the things that you see in most industries or everyday life that you're like, this needs to change and this is yeah. absolutely backwards? Yeah, I see it everywhere. And again, it's because it is very much an afterthought. I think that there's such an emphasis placed on the analysis of data and uh in my experience, analysts who get really invested in analysis believe that the stories they pull out will speak for themselves, that they are obvious, right? Um, and it's, it's just, that is, a, that is a condition of being so close to the data and losing perspective and empathy. And those are major things that we try to introduce in the course, the idea of how much planning needs to go in to building an appropriate story and the correct using the correct data. And then there is certainly the, what I call the data designer uh, elements to the output as well, which frankly just aren't taught. Um, and I see this everywhere, right? It, it, it doesn't matter if uh, which industry we are talking about. I, I would say that the industries that are a little more immersed in data or have more access to data, I find to be particular violators of many of the, the tenets of good visualization. And I think it is because they believe that the data speaks for itself, or they believe that they have the newest tool which should do all the work for them. But it is such a human approach uh, to, uh, to data storytelling, um, or such a, a human approach is required for good data storytelling. And it's just things that uh, unless you've been taught it and been taught it correctly, you, you can't really expect to know it. That's a very inter interesting insight to me because I mean, I showed you some of the affiliate marketing dashboards that yeah. I've been dealing with and I'm not gonna name some of the companies involved, but I okay. shared some of the largest uh, like $100 million type of uh, companies. And I said, mm -hmm. are you seeing what I'm seeing? And yeah. ironically enough, it's in affiliate marketing, we have access to so much data and we run into so much data and you'd think we're some of the most data-driven uh, you know, businesses around, but it's the opposite. Yeah, and, and, it, and I remember seeing those, those uh, the, the dashboards and, and I remember being struck by two immediate thoughts. One, they're beautiful because there's clearly a lot of effort and development time placed in creating good looking, interesting uh, visualizations, right? The second thought I had just as immediately was, there's no story here. Like all it is is data, right? And that's, I think the big pitfall that we fall into that we, we believe that the, the, the dashboard is there to communicate the data. It is in part, but there's really three questions that any good dashboard should be answering. One is, what's the performance? That's the data, and that's critically important. The next is, what does it mean? What's the interpretation? What's the insight, right? And then the third is, what do I do? That's the recommendation. A good dashboard will do all those things. And I remember looking at those dashboards and uh, just feeling like, the, there wasn't there wasn't a story there. It, it wasn't telling me anything. It was giving me a lot of information. But if you are someone who is immersed in this world with the kind of skills needed to pull stories from those uh, from your analysis and from the to your point, the vast amount of data that we have, if you are creating a dashboard that's just displaying that data, you are effectively just turning the story over to whoever's looking at it. Right. You are taking yourself completely out of the process. And, and so that's that's what I try to, to really enforce with people that I get the pleasure like yourself to work with. You have the critical skills that your stakeholders don't. They shouldn't. That's why they brought you in. So you need to use that, particularly when it comes to analyzing those data, finding the stories, telling those stories, and your dashboard should just be a reflection of that.
Yeah. Well, not to give uh, too much uh, credit and compliments for your course, but uh, I felt like I gained that uh, extra level of insight after the course. I remember the first third of the course when we were focusing on the storytelling part, I was like, let me look at these dashboards again. And then basically applying the basic principles. And I said, it's definitely exactly how you described it. It's flat data. There's no story behind it. There's no even a gateway to achieve that story. And it wasn't until you know I decided to take uh, one of the projects that let me work on the data that I see day in, day out. And I decided to learn Tableau. And then once I started putting a bunch of filters together, I mean, the stories almost told themselves. I said, yeah. this was just shocking. If the affiliate program actually gave me the same dashboards that I gave myself, I would just be shocked. And then, of course, it created more stories where I started asking affiliate programs. I said, do you know the conversion rate of all your landing pages? And most of them said, about half of them said yes. But then I said, would you be interested in a data survey where I would help you uh, optimize it? And most of them said yes. I'm like, you wouldn't say yes to that unless you actually didn't have yeah. a problem or you already knew what, what your conversion rate was. So it, yeah. it was just a total irony. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, that's a great example of you beginning in the right place. And we talk about this in the course too, right? Is you, you begin any kind of analysis that will result in a dashboard or some kind of story that you tell by getting together the right questions identifying the right data that you'll need to answer those questions, right? And and that's where we begin. We wind up in a place where we can answer those things. But what you've in that story, what you've you just what you did was present those questions. And 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 your stakeholders, your affiliate partners, you know, look, they've got businesses to run, right? Like they've got they have short-term demands to meet. And so they don't always have the opportunity to step back and look at those broader, bigger questions. Uh, and, and this is why, again, right? It's almost a responsibility of those dashboards to answer those things for them, not just focus on the short term, to give them real value uh, and unlock real opportunity. And I can say from what I'm seeing in the past year that there are more people jumping into the affiliate marketing space or being hired to take on some of these jobs. So. There are changes. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. next question I wanted to ask is, you know, you must have seen a lot of different data stories where things just came to life yeah. and you're like, wow, this is absolutely phenomenal. If you have yeah. any, any to share. Yeah, there's a number of them, right? Like um, there's this wonderful story that I, you know, tr honestly, I have tried to uh, find the, um, the news article that was the source of this. I never have been able to. So I just have a sense that this was kind of handed down through Silicon Valley lore. But there's this great story of how Bezos um, identified book buyers and book readers as high value customers. And that hence is why Amazon began as a bookseller, right? To, to, to focus on this, this uh, valuable customer segment. Uh, and, and I think, you know, for a company that has uh, resulted in what Amazon has become. I think those, those are, that's a wonderful beginning, right? That, that comes right from an insight. I, I, the, much more contemporary uh, examples I've seen recently uh, are, are all around how people are reacting to the pandemic experience that we had, right? And, and how that impacted business and how businesses were able then to create differentiated service levels and, and service offerings allowing customers to choose what they wanted to choose uh, and, and basing those offerings on data that they had collected. Lululemon, for instance, has a great story of doing just that and allowing customers to either shop online entirely, shop online, pick up in store, use a, 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 a guide, like a shopping, a shopper guide, uh, employed by the company uh, to help them as well. All these things came from a better understanding of data. But really, I think the best story that I was personally involved in and that I, I often reflect on and just get a kick out of was a story that turned out not to be there. We, I, I, was, helping, um, I was helping the auto manufacturers really release, build and then release this this car configuration technology, right? Which you see everywhere now, the ability to sit down and build yourself a car 
online. And when it was first coming out, like we thought what we had found would be this tremendous tie between people who were going to buy a car and exactly what they wanted. It'd be a great way for us to connect their, their uh, needs to our offerings. And so, um, you, you know, we, we launched these technologies to great fanfare. And unfortunately, <laughs> it turned out that there was no connection, no correlation really at all between utilizing a car configurator and then ultimately buying that car. It, it, it uh, turned out far too often. These were 16 year old boys who were just building the cars of their dreams. Right. Uh, so these are things that we've learned along the way. Right. And, and, and I think one of the reasons why I love that that data story is because it goes to show that sometimes the stories aren't what you think they are. Right. And as long as you let the data tell you the story and follow, let it organically come from the data, you're going to wind up in a good place. So those are those are just a few of my favorites, I guess. Yeah, we don't want to be wrong, but at the same time, there's uh, there's definitely a value in into not like putting all your eggs in one basket because you believe something to be true, and if you just yeah. did that one little data experiment, you would uh, find out hmm, maybe you should pivot to something else. Yeah, well, it's learning, right? The whole thing, and this is analytics. It's the pursuit of questions, and and when we do it right, and we we get toward an answer of a question, it creates a half dozen other questions for us. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I think to be really immersed in this space, you have to really embrace curiosity. Uh, and it has to be has to be a characteristic that you that um, you you feel core uh, to yourself, right? My next question is, you know, uh, how long have you been doing the the data visualization course with Elevator? And you must have seen some trends over time, um, mm -hmm. like in terms of more. Uh, students kind of signing on. And I'm just kind of wondering, what's your take of what are you seeing in the yeah. world of everything from data science, data visualization, business intelligence? It looks like this is just starting to explode right now. Yeah, we, we've been doing it for about five years. So I think this was this was a, a pretty early runner. But I, I, I really do believe that prior to the work we've done, most data visualization education revolved around learning a tool, becoming proficient in a visualization tool, right? Learning all the functions and features. And uh, what we've done is taken that step back and a harder look at what makes for good data stories and good visualization and how do you ultimately get there? The tool is important, but it's just an add-on, right? So what I have seen is um, uh, certainly growth. I mean, the, the, every single time we run the course, we get more and more people um, into it. Uh, it's, the popularity has just continued to increase. And I, I believe that what is happening in the market has been really good for business for us. And that is in the market, just further developments of tools, further focus on, on technology to create visuals, to analyze data, Right, particularly the move towards artificial intelligence and, and all the wonderful things that, that that can do. It is effectively, uh, I think for many people, taking the, the human a little further away from the process um, it, because these tools are so great and proficient and effective. You know, you can, you can let it do its thing a little more, get yourself less involved. Um, because the the AI, AI algorithms are are able to so effectively discover patterns and collect and analyze, you know, uh, enormous uh, sums of data, you can take you as an analyst a little further out of the process. And so, what we are talking about, the result of that is is really at the end of the day, poor data storytelling poor visualization, right? So what we're talking about is the opposite. It's it's getting the, the human really entwined in the story, getting the analyst back into the data. Um, and so we, we, you know, because of this, this market trend toward tools, I, I feel like we're becoming even more appreciated for what we are doing in, in this, in this course. Um, 
it's also it's it's been amazing to me just how rapidly the tool market moves and develops and now with data privacy uh and, and other concerns coming in many of the the uh the tools that we would have relied on um no longer work or have just fallen from the market right so it's been a very interesting thing to see how the tool market has progressed while knowing that what we're doing is pretty timeless um, and it doesn't matter those, those tools you know, everything else that's happening are just just uh, uh, things that that the human analyst needs to be aware of but we're we stay very focused on the human analyst yeah, just in my own personal experience of, you know, building stats tools and not really understanding, I was actually going down this path of data science and data analytics. Uh, I've just noticed that, you know, the interest in what we do has gone from, oh, that's a kind of boring topic to now it's like, um, you know, just more people in my own affiliate marketing space wanting to talk and, you know, just going, okay, what what's, what's out there for data stories and what can we uncover and what are people doing? And the stories behind the scenes, uh, because I'm now in this space, I get to talk to a lot of these people and it's just absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my last question is, what do you see for the future of affiliate marketing as it intersects with business intelligence? Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting, right? And it's um, because uh, it is such a data intensive category, right? Uh, I think it's going to be impacted pretty significantly at least it has a, the opportunity to be impacted significantly and if you understand the way that data can help you as a company you, you can you can be very successful with uh, as these these tools and uh business intelligence tools continue to evolve i mean it's there's m many more advanced analytic techniques that, that you'll be able to apply, just like we do in, in every market, right, in every industry. But I think, again, the, the, the amount of data, the data reliance that we see in affiliate marketing, that's going to become even more important. That's going to allow for greater personalization and targeting and understanding of both consumers that uh, are, are working their way through the affiliate networks, as well as just conversion, um, what that means, how that's predicted, and how that's how that's estimated. So that that for me is going to take, I, I think, an area of measurement around affiliate marketing that has always been somewhat nebulous, right, and bring a lot more clarity, um, both in terms of the ability for business intelligence tools to to better predict uh, value as well as better attribute value as well. I think that's another area that uh, that that the the evolution of, of business intelligence is is going to bring. And all those things together, you know, it's just going to create even even greater partnerships, even greater collaboration is going to allow you know, you to understand which partners are, are truly performing, which ones aren't as well. And, and then even gain a deeper understanding of when performance isn't what you want it to be, why, right? And, and pinpoint for those that are, are going to be successful and it pinpoint those, those pain points and, and really solve them too. So I think there's a lot on the horizon for, for affiliate marketing. And it will be really exciting to, to watch it evolve uh, and see what happens. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I mean, just uh, I feel fortunate to be in the space at the this time. And uh, yeah, my job now is to make sure that I've got my foot in the door outside the industry where mm -hmm. I'm spending time with data scientists and basically taking a step into your world and making sure that uh, these two start talking to each other. Great. Yeah. Well, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I hope you're doing that with the, the kind of understanding of, of data storytelling that we 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 would have talked about um and that you are you're able to to evangelize some of those ideas as well and bring some much needed better data visualization to a category that that really is is really requires it yeah the data viz is a work in progress and the storytelling uh that's uh, maybe challenging but that's the fun part where we can uncover stories and work with affiliates and say if you can help us, uh, we'll look at your data and, you know, let's see if we can make some case studies and the case studies are where things come to life. 
Yeah. Kevin, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I'm going to share your contact information for Please. all your courses and uh, your books as well. So uh, if you just want to share how people can get a hold of you. Yeah, I, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, connect with me there for sure. Uh, that's that's probably the easiest way for you to reach out. Uh, and I spend a good deal of time there. I, I also, my, my email address, uh, I'm happy to give that as well. It's just khartman at indie dot edu that's uh that's my teaching address and where you'll you'll always be able to reach me awesome thank you so much of course thank you john thank you for tuning in to the affiliate bi podcast i'd like to take this time to ask for a small favor to leave a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast that helps us expand our reach to rank higher in podcast directories and reach more listeners